Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and I hope you're all doing well. The M1 architecture released by Apple late last year completely blew away the expectations of many tech enthusiasts, myself included. Now that the dust has settled after a few months for the apps to grow into this new system, how well does the M1 chip handle photo and video editing? I'll be answering those questions in this video, but I wanna make clear that this is gonna be more of a practical review on how well this technology performs for somebody that does photo or video editing. So if you're looking for a ton of synthetic tests or direct comparisons, I would look elsewhere. There's plenty of videos right here on YouTube. If you're new here, this channel is all about landscape photography, adventures out in the field, editing photos, or live streaming. So if you're into that, make sure you subscribe. That said, I've had a finger on the pulse of technology since <laughs> all the way back in high school, specifically computers. And when the M1s were announced, I thought it was all fluff. There was no way that the first iteration of their processor could compete with Intel or AMD. Well, <laughs> I was wrong. And that was quickly disproved, and the results in my tests are quite impressive. So let's dive in. So I bought an M1 MacBook Air to replace my 2018 13-inch MacBook Pro that had very similar stats outside of obviously being a few years older and an Intel-based CPU. The truth is, I actually didn't expect to buy a Mac again. I had two MacBook Pros, one that died, and they both had the touch bar, butterfly keyboard, and four Thunderbolt ports. I really wasn't in love with them, especially the touch bar, and I actually planned on getting an XPS 13 or maybe a Razer Blade when I eventually got a new laptop. That was until the M1 came around. And while the ports are still an issue, I was interested enough simply based on the power per watt that Apple was claiming. I picked the Air over the Pro because I really didn't want a touch bar, and from all my research, the added fans in the Pro really weren't all that necessary. The Air also has the added bonus of being just a tad lighter, and I'll shave weight anywhere I can. Ultimately, my biggest wants were something that I could edit if I needed to, but had really extreme battery efficiency, and nothing even comes close to the M1 Max at the moment. The three programs we're gonna be testing are Photoshop, Lightroom Classic, and Premiere. As of making this video, Photoshop is running natively and not in beta on the M1 architecture. Premiere is running natively on the M1 architecture with a beta app, and Lightroom Classic is still running off Rosetta, meaning it's not natively running on the M1 Mac, which makes it less optimized, but will eventually run on the M1. Thus, if you're watching this at a later date, the performance should improve well into the future. And I'd like to reiterate, this will not be a technical comparison, especially considering I don't have a swath of machines to directly compare it to. Instead, I'm just gonna be going over my experience, testing large image files, browsing Lightroom libraries, and just testing video playback. So let's get started with that. We're gonna start off with Lightroom Classic. Lightroom Classic released version 10, I wanna say about six months ago, and I covered that in a video here. Within that version, they added GPU acceleration to things like zoom scrubbing and local adjustments. This helped quite a bit for performance when adding multiple adjustments, and it especially made a difference in breathing some new life into that old 2018 MacBook Pro that I had, which at the time was only two years old. However, it still, it still wasn't enough, and my MacBook struggled with large pixel images with lots of adjustments. I haven't had a bunch of time with the new M1, but I did spend the good portion of a day sorting through libraries, editing large pano images, and adjusting numerous images with lots of local adjustments without any hiccups so far. It absolutely feels like it's running smoother, even emulated than it did on my old two and a half year old laptop. It feels just as snappy as my desktop. So if you're on the fence about getting an M1 Mac, just because Lightroom doesn't run natively yet, don't hesitate. I've thrown huge files at it with an above average amount of editing on some of them, and I haven't had any issues so far. And it's only going to get better once they release the native version of Lightroom Classic. Speaking of native programs, let's jump into Photoshop. I've actually avoided heavy editing on my laptop for years, and I've used this main purpose to just manage files out in the field or to record my edits when I'm sitting here for YouTube. And this is for two reasons. The obvious one being just real estate. Being able to edit on two 27-inch monitors on my desktop is a much bigger convenience than a 13-inch screen on my laptop. But the second one is the lack of power I felt in editing on Photoshop on my old laptop. You can even see here in this clip from my focus stacking video how much my laptop was struggling. 
I had four images loaded in one mask and the computer just could barely handle it. Thus, I've always left my heavy editing to be done when I eventually got back here to the office. And I'll still be approaching my workflow the same way, even with the M1 Mac. But for my testing, there's just a lot more power here. I went back and actually tested that same photo that my old laptop struggled with on the new M1 Mac, and I didn't have any issues. I've opened and started editing quite a few photos, and I noticed a considerable difference in responsiveness. Even though I'll prefer waiting until I get home just for that extra setup, knowing I can edit quite heavily on the M1 is a game changer. One thing currently missing is a luminosity panel, or most add-ons for that matter, and I've already contacted Tony for the TK Action Panel, and he's releasing a beta for that specifically. I think it's actually already out, and I'm working on getting that installed. Uh, other apps, you can still use the Rosetta version of Photoshop for those apps, but eventually I'm sure they'll make it onto the new version of Photoshop. Last but not least, let's take a look at Premiere. I just wanna say that DaVinci Resolve already runs natively on the M1, but it's something that I've never really used in my workflow, and I didn't wanna start now because I'd have no reference for its performance. I also don't use Final Cut because I use OS X and Windows that you can see behind me. The two things I really wanted to test were H.265 playback and export speed. I didn't even attempt video editing on my old, old laptop. That experience was just not good. And if I actually had to edit in the field, I just had to proxy everything. Even on my desktop, which is a few years old, but uses a first gen Ryzen Threadripper and a dedicated 1080 Ti as a GPU, H.265 playback isn't always smooth. This means that the footage I get from things like my Mavic 2 Pro or my Fuji X-T4 typically have to be proxied, even on my desktop. That said, I knew the M1 chip, native H.265 decoding, is supposed to be great, and honestly, I was blown away. I get smoother H.265 playback on this tiny MacBook Air than I do my full-fledged desktop. Here, take a look really quick. Here's the MacBook Air. Notice its responsiveness as I seek through the video. Now, here's the desktop. Did you notice that it just stopped playing? That's with effects applied like Lumetri, multiple videos layered on top of each other, etc. I couldn't believe it. While I'd still prefer editing on the desktop simply for that extra real estate, knowing I can edit remotely is a huge bonus for the M1 Mac, and I don't even have to sacrifice performance. As for export speed, I took the same timeline and exported it on both machines. I picked my Canon R5 video that you can see here to test it out because it has all sorts of video elements. And codecs including H.265 from my X-T4, ABC HD from my C100, high bitrate composite video from my logo intro, the list goes on. The desktop exported a bit faster at 6 minutes and 19 seconds, while the MacBook Air came in at 7 minutes and 57 seconds. But to me, that's still pretty incredible. I even made sure to have the M1 already heated up to give a real-world representation when I did the export. And I'm pretty sure my old laptop averaged at least 4 times the amount of speed when it came to exporting the same timeline as my desktop. And it was only a 20% difference between the two, the M1 and my desktop. The best part of all of this is just how efficient it is. Seriously, as someone with a degree in electrical engineering and decades of tech experience, the power per watt efficiency here is incredible. Not only does it edit better, export faster, and keep up with even my desktop sometimes, it does stay cooler and uses far less power. That means I can have the laptop sitting on my lap while editing without giving my legs second degree burns, and it also means I need to charge it far less when I'm out in the wilderness with barely any power. I literally filmed all the B-roll you just watched on battery power editing photos, opening Photoshop, skimming videos, and I even exported an entire 4K video and the battery was only down to 92% at the end of it all. All in all, the performance of this processor and laptop is astonishing, and I don't use that word lightly. We haven't even seen the full potential yet as after still moving to natively run on the M1 chipset, and there are rumors for even beefier MacBook Pros that bring back the MagSafe adapter and have better ports. And as much as I wanted to wait for that, I needed a laptop sooner rather than later, and I can honestly say that I'm not disappointed. The fact that this thing keeps up with my desktop for the most part 
while using significantly less power is enough for me to recommend it. And if you're in the market and specifically need a laptop for photo or video editing, you should not hesitate on the M1 chip. Yes, there are other laptops out there that will absolutely perform similarly, but none of them will use the power efficiency. And if you're like me, that's important. I think that's the greatest feat of the M1 Max. It's not necessarily that they're blowing the water or blowing the skies open with performance. It's that they're keeping up with everything else at a fraction of the power. So with that said, I'm gonna be on a bit of a hiatus next month, for the next month rather, and my plan is to just go shoot without any schedule, meaning you might not see an upload from me for a while. If I can edit on this machine and find Wi-Fi, I'll certainly try to post something, but if not, just know that I'll be back with a lot of content eventually. As always, thanks for watching, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on the M1 Mac down below. Would you get one, or would you recommend something else? So, I'll see you soon-ish. Later. Later.